I'd like a rum and coke. I'd like a rum and coke. I'd like a decaf coffee. I'd like a decaf coffee. Hi, my name is Robin and this is my story. I'd like a rum and coke. I'd like a rum and coke. If my body will have been like most of yours, I will have lived a much different life. If my body will have been like most of yours, I will have lived a much different life. I will be appearing periodically throughout the place. I'd like a rum and coke. I would like an ice cap. I need furry cake. I would like an ice cap. However, others will also portray me at the grand ages. I would like an ice cap. Please welcome Karen Reed as she narrates my story. Thank you all in advance for coming out to support myself and creative spirits theater. It was what appeared to be a normal day. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, my mother woke me and fed me breakfast. Everything seemed pretty normal, except I had a bad feeling. Dad was quiet and my suitcase was packed. It was a day I will remember forever. After what seemed like a long and very quiet drive, I arrived at what I can only call a very large, cold place. I had never been there before. It was full of strangers, almost like a hospital. But there was something different about this place. I had no idea what was going on. I was only five years old the day I was brought to the institution. You see, I was born with a body different from others, but it seemed so normal to me. It was the only body I ever had. I had a mom, I had a dad, and I thought they loved me. I must have done something terrible to end up where they took me. This is what I was thinking the day they dropped me off. Mom, it's so dark and cold in there. I know, but I just can't take care of her anymore at home. It's just too hard. I know, you must be the McKay. Thank you. We've been expecting you. And you must be Rhonda. Welcome. Yes, this is Rhonda. She doesn't like green peas. She doesn't like anything green. She does love chocolate, oh, but don't overdo it. Oh, yes. You must have. Her nightlight, which she lights on every night, okay. And she loves <coughs> us to uh, bring some questions. So here's the sheet. Thank you. It's a little bit because it's been in my purse for a while. Don't worry, everything will be just fine. We'll take very good care of her. Now, if you'll come with me, we have some papers to sign. Okay. Where are we? Why are we here? <coughs> Why are there bars on the windows? Why are those people talking about me? Why are my bags packed with all my clothes? Oh, yes, there's the safe dog. Bye, honey. We'll be seeing you whenever I come to visit. Don't forget to turn the night yeah. light off. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I cried every day. At least that's how I remember it. I sat by a window. I waited and waited, and no one ever came. Well, that's not exactly true. They visited me three times a year, and I went home with them for two weeks a year. Yes, this was my new life. I couldn't talk very well. I mean, I tried to talk like everyone else, but someone would really have had to care about me to get to know what I was trying to say. For some reason, the words just had such a hard time coming out. I had to sit in a wheelchair, and my muscles never did what I wanted them to do. I needed help to eat, and well, I needed help with just about everything. At the time, I didn't know why I was the way I was, but later on in life, I found out. 
The umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck during childbirth. I didn't get enough oxygen. What a stroke of bad luck. Just imagine everything was fine for nine months and bang, my life was changed. I have cerebral palsy. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now we know that many people with CP are as intellectual as the rest of the population. Are you excited to hear what's next? Me too. So here I was. I honestly kept thinking someone would come and get me any day. But one thing I knew for sure, I had two choices. I could live in fear and hate everyone and everything for the mess I was in, or accept it, be happy, do what I can, and never, ever give up. You see, the institution was a stagnant place. No joy, no zest. And although I had my limitations, I couldn't help but notice what was going on around me. One thing I've always been very good at is the observation of others. And those who know me well know that I always, always see the beauty, even as a child. Yes, I was determined to free my smiling heart. such a place. Picture a huge brick building. Bars on the windows, doors are locked, and people are dressed in hospital attire like nurses. Picture all types of different disabled people in the very same place, eating the same food, sometimes just sitting around doing nothing, day in and day out. These are the kind of places people would be sent to if you were born needing some specialized care. Imagine now the sounds of children crying, often confused, lonely, hurting. And imagine laying in bed at night and hearing things going on around you that just didn't feel right. None of us felt loved in this place. There was never enough supervision. 
and the ones of us that were more vulnerable were never protected. I would imagine some happy thoughts to help me make it through some of those very long, lonely, scared nights. Thoughts like my father tucking me into bed, all safe and sound, and I knew if only I could walk, I would certainly have chosen to become a ballerina. Green school, green school, the years star. Up above the world so high, like the diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder if you are. Daddy, sing me another song. No time to go see. Don't close your eye. I will turn your music up. I was looking forward to getting out of the institution and going there. It wasn't a school with all children, just those with disabilities. It really bothers me that I did not get a chance to go to a school like most people do. But I got the highest marks in my class. And I love to learn. My reading is impeccable, as is my spelling. It wasn't as though I could write the words on paper like most people. My muscles didn't work that way but I knew how to spell those words. I only had one friend. She was at the institution too. I think they locked her up for having a crooked spine. And there was this other fella that was in my class. Oh, how I wanted to call him and say, please take me home with you. He was sweet and he was kind to me at school.